People's Podcast. The People's Podcast. Okay. Yes, sir. And we are waiting right now. My minister people are sending me the questions uh, that they have for you. And I'm waiting on the notification. And I see it, Brother Minister. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of the People's Podcast this afternoon, sir. Uh, we have a great guest with us, uh, Student Minister uh, Rodney Muhammad out of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This means so much to us, sir, that you would take time out of your busy, busy schedule to give us some information as well as some inspiration, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Well, yes, thank sir. you for and having me on. I hope I can give both in yes, sir. Yes, sir. And inspiration. <laughs> Beautiful, sir. Uh, the first thing that we want to uh, ask you is when, in fact, did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, sir? I can say that um, uh, my, the first time really hearing uh, the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was around 1979. I received a phone call from a friend of mine. And, um, you know, in the world, we used to sit and, and, and smoke and drink and listen to the Ballad of the Bullet with Malcolm X. Yes, sir. And I had all the speeches uh, that were available on record from Dr. King. And so a friend of mine called me and he said, there's a man who used to work with Malcolm X uh, and he's supposed to be speaking tonight. And so, uh, I jumped in the shower and we hopped in his car and we drove over to Martin Luther King High School and Dr. Charles Knox and Haki Malabuti and others were putting on an event and the featured speaker was Minister Louis Farrakhan that night. And that was 1979. That was Great. 1979 that we heard him. And I almost memorized his whole address that night. I was so excited. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And what was it about that uh, speech that made you want to accept the teachings? Well, you know, to be honest, it goes back to being a child. When I was um, growing up on the south side of Chicago, um, when I hit the uh, fourth grade going to the fifth grade, my mother uh, had me stay down in Tennessee and I lived on a farm with, with her mother uh, and my uncle there. And um, uh, my uh, grandmother was, was uh, ferociously religious. And so we had to be at church uh, every Sunday and sometimes through the week at night at church. Uh, and so when, and of course we were pork eaters then. And I think to this day that pork affected her and uh, she fell one day. And from that day on, she was never the same Mm. Uh, and her eyes got weak and so she would have me read the Bible to her and other books that she had that were religiously uh, grounded and so these images were in my head and so what I can say after being baptized down there in Tennessee is that my mind was baptized some 15 years later or more when I heard Minister Farrakhan those images came to life that I remembered from the Bible. And so, you know, I, I, I think that's the best way to describe how I was in, impacted uh, that night when he spoke about Moses and the children of Israel and being delivered. Yes. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Praise and, be to Allah. Yes, sir. And I want to make sure that I thank you on behalf of myself, my family, and our viewing audience for your sacrifice and the sacrifice of your family for all of these years to help establish Islam in North America, sir. We thank you very much, Brother Minister. Oh, brother. Uh, and I, and I, thank, I thank your family and I, I, I do extend condolences again. I spoke with your father. I tried to reach him by phone, but I know you all were tied up a lot. And so yes, I sir. did see him a couple of weeks ago in Chicago and we spoke briefly. Yes, sir. Praise and I thank you all. all. The great, great sacrifice that your family has made and is still making, so. You know, Praise be to Allah, sir. How did your parents feel about you accepting the teaching? Well, um, my father, it was really a stepfather. He, he'd been with me mostly all my life. He, he, he wasn't against it. He, 
he likes wisdom, but he never was a churchgoer. You know, my folks growing up in Chicago, you know, my family on my father's side, we had about eight, maybe, maybe eight nightclubs and one liquor store. So we mm. made our living off partying. In fact, um, it would be coming in late at night in Chicago, the clubs, some of the clubs close at four and they give you an extra hour on Saturday. So when you're coming in from a, from a club on Saturday, you actually have to five o'clock in the morning to closing time. And that's the time that Minister Farrakhan would be on the radio. Mm -hmm. And we would hear that voice back then uh, coming in from a night of partying and that kind of thing. But uh, my mother was uh, not necessarily for it. She could tolerate it because she could see that it had a positive impact on my life. And so, um, but um, I never thought, I think she always thought we'd get in trouble. Um, you know, we were against the government or different <laughs> things like that. So, you know, they, they have these, these pictures, but uh, so it was a little split, but my father, he always liked to hear things that I shared. He would just be mesmerized when I would share things. But, uh, and I got my mother to come to the mosque once in Chicago after we got the property back on Stony Island. I think it was a Mother's Day. I got her to come by, but she was a member of Jeremiah Wright's church. Beautiful. Before Beautiful. she died there. Yes. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Yes. And he and, and what a great job that he has done and continues to do in preaching in Chicago. Um, yeah. What was it like meeting the most ominous so far kind for the first? Um, the, the first time I saw him up close, uh, I went to join and, um, we got to the, you know, I, I was going to meetings, the bigger meetings. I had been to Savior's Day, 1981, the first Savior's Day in the rebuilding. And before Savior's Day, I had gone to Medina Temple. He spoke mm -hmm. there. Uh, oh God, that was an incredible meeting. And then uh, Dunbar High School, he and Kwame Ture held a meeting mm -hmm. together called Religion and Revolution. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was, that was a powerful night at Dunbar High School in Chicago. Uh, but then um, we were trying to find him. And uh, there was a church at, at, right around at 63rd Street and Reverend Porter's church. And we were just trying to find out where was this man Farrakhan uh, at that time. And um, um, the next thing we know, he was opening the, getting ready to open the final call building. Mm -hmm. And so we went there that September of uh, 1982. And um, um, it was right then that I joined, right after that. I, I joined in 82. Uh, right there at the, uh, we were at the final call building. We just got in there, uh, still uh, fixing it up. And um, and so in there, we were in a study group uh, and all of a sudden someone started talking and they were just going through the book message to the black man. I'd never forget it. We were on page either 30 or 31, but it was dealing with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad dealing with the 50,000 years ago history of Shabazz. And then he went to this period and the man was just talking with amazement of the words that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was expressing. And I looked up and it was Minister Farrakhan. He was sitting right there really talking to us in the study group circle. Uh, and so uh, it was, uh, you know, it was just, um, I can't tell you, I, I, I can tell you this, over the years, and I'm sure your father has met so many more than myself, but we've met a lot of celebrity, celebrities, uh, just important people, well-placed people all over this planet, but nothing, after meeting Minister Farrakhan, nothing has impressed me uh, the way I, I'm still impressed with him. Uh, and so uh, that's the best way I could answer that is that, that it was just too impactful for me. I still 
in my mind and heart, I'm not close to him over these years in a way that I'm familiar with him. I still see him as my leader and teacher. I'm still in awe to be in his presence. You know, and I'm, I'm happy for that because, because if you get to a point where you feel familiar with someone, you can lose that uh, sense of feeling and, and, and that can have an impact on your salvation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So beautiful, Brother Minister. Excellent. Yes, and you yes. have a lot of people showing you love in the comments. I just want to thank you. Uh, take some time to read to you some of the comments. Sam Lakum, Brother Nasir says, Brother, um, um, thank you from South, representing South Philly. Brother Joseph sends the greetings. My sister Miriam sends the greetings. Thank you all for continuing to watch the People's Podcast. Uh, Brother Minister, for, I didn't know that you were from Chicago. So my entire time of you watching me and my siblings grow up, and of course, we know your children, um, you were in Philadelphia. How did you get from Chicago to Philadelphia? That's the journey. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I started, uh, I was just a, a member of the FOI, and um, Brother Collett, Brother Collett was brought from California uh, around... 83, 84, and it was the same time the minister had accepted to help Reverend Jesse Jackson in his run for the presidency. And so um, uh, in that Brother Collett, he came, he just, he wanted such a big army so fast, uh, he just took a lot of us and made us lieutenants. And so he, but he ended up, I was working under a lieutenant and for some reason, something didn't get collected or something, and that lieutenant had disappeared. And by me being his squad leader, I, my job was to step into his place and really collect this money that he was supposed to do. And I was a little timid and afraid to do it, so Brother Collett busted me. And so I just accepted the. I thought when you got busted, you just accepted it and went away. Then he started berating me because I wouldn't appeal to get my post back <laughs> he said man you don't even ask for your post back i don't understand you all you know so anyway um a brother who worked in the in the video department they were developing it still they used to have everything right in the basement of the final call building then but we used to sit around and have conversations about the teachings and Sometime we'd be late in the night. We didn't even know the hours would just pass. So the brother said, well, you know, the way you talk, you should be in the ministry class. I said, I don't know. Um, and so I kind of stayed away, but Minister Akbar was the assistant minister. And so he was handling the ministry class. So long thing short, I said, well, let me go the night of the ministry class to see if I could join. So brother Akbar said, well, you can't join right now, brother, because it's already been open and we developed. So I stayed away. And then um, I came back and tried to join. And then he said, yes, but you all have to get out and get to work. So we went to try to open up new cities right outside of Chicago. And um, um, I used to come in on Wednesday nights and nobody would hardly come out. And so I would teach on Wednesday nights to three or four people. And yes, I would yes, just keep teaching and teaching. And, and so um, and surprisingly, the minister had brought Sister Ava from Brooklyn, New York, and she was teaching on Fridays, and it would only be a handful of people. Mm. And, uh, and and just a quick history, you know, I went and got all her tapes out of the Final Call building that were in the basement. And that's when it became real to her that she could take her tapes and market them and her tapes start selling all over the country. I said, sister, you did so, but um, I um, ultimately, the minister made me the national secretary. Um, he, he, by 1988, I believe in December, he made sister Bessie Jean, his daughter, the MGT captain. He made uh, uh, our Supreme captain, now Mustafa, he named him and he made him an assistant Supreme Captain to Brother Frank Muhammad at that time. 
and he said he was going to make me the national secretary. And I said, oh, God. And so, um, and so I served that post up to a point where I believe he wanted to get another uh, person to work as national secretary. And, um, you know, he, he always wanted a secretary that would come out before the believers and really be able to talk to them and convey to them the nation's policies and, and the state of the nation. And if you look at some of the old tapes of the national secretaries, you'll see them addressing the nation of what the messenger was doing for the nation. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So that was the kind of task I took on at that time. And that's when I met your father and others uh, from traveling around the country. Uh, but long thing short, he, he was developing a position uh, that was I think it was ultimately to form into what you call an inspector general mm, because mm, he mm. told me, he said, well, brother, you know, everything about, you know, running the mosque, you know, how to administrate, you know, how to, what the book should look like. You can preach and everything. So, you know, uh, I'm going to have you be a, first, it was a national troubleshooter. And so the areas where there were real problems, he was sending me Memphis, Tennessee, um, I went to South Carolina. He sent myself and Minister Don Muhammad to, to London for about five days. We had to stay in London five days back mm. then. And then Philadelphia was one of the cities I had to be sent to. And, um, and so ultimately, he um, had me go back to Philadelphia and he sent them a letter and appointed me as the minister of Philadelphia. And that was in 1991. Mm. August of 1991, uh, and I've Praise been there ever since. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Excellent Praise job, Brother. Sister, yeah. Sister Noni Muhammad says, teach, and I, as I'm like, my sister Miriam says, great history. Uh, I want to go back to Dr. Khaled. What was it like um, working under him um, in those days? In those days, you know, I, I would say very inspiring. Um, um, long before um, the dope busters which your father held and we were so proud of that work in DC and um, uh, and the combination of laborers that we had there then you know um, brother Collett used to have us sometime we'd be out to three in the morning but I would say for me he had us where we really we really wanted to soldier and we, we would go into the night sometime. We'd be all the way on the west side in Chicago out talking with people uh, and different things. And so, you know, but he, he really, I think Brother Collin of all the positions he served, I, I would have to say being a Supreme Captain, I think he really loved the military. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Uh, and um, I, I, you know, for me, it was inspiring to see him he 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 really you know he he made you look at more than just being in a mosque you know when you were with college you thought about a nation you know yes, sir. I, I could still see in my mind uh brother college court-martialing traitors and things once the nation <laughs> was set up you know so i mean that's the kind of soldier he was and so by me being a student of history, he used to like to have me around and talk about the military histories of World War II and you know different things like that. And so, uh, but uh, all in all, uh, it it was it was inspiring, you know, to work up under him. Uh, he he liked a lot of movement, like your father. They like movement. Let's move out. Let's do. Uh, and so we would line up the men and, you know, we would grow. I, I remember after every Sunday meeting, Brother Collett would make all the men, whether you were visiting for your first time or whatever, once Minister Farrakhan finished, all the men stay. Mm -hmm. And then he'd tell all the men, I want all of you all to be out tomorrow night. Well, some didn't know that they had the option not to do it because <laughs> they weren't in the nation. And so a lot of them a lot of these men would show up the next night, but he would try to build this army. And I think uh, I could say that um, it was it was one meeting we went to in Chicago where 
we got in touch with gang leaders and that Khaled wanted to meet with them. And so we get to this room and there's between, there's between 450 and 600 people in this room. So when we got back to the final call building, you know, Brother Khaled said, what gang was that that we met with? And we had to say, Brother Captain, that wasn't a gang. Those were gang leaders. Mm. They, they didn't have their gangs with them. And he, so he, he, he was adamant about building the Chicago force to a 10,000 man army just in Chicago. Because he, he, you know, Chicago is a gang city. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a, it's a, I mean, I've seen other cities. I've seen the gangs. They're pretty vicious. Uh, but Chicago, according to U.S. News World Report magazine, uh, had the largest, most organized gangs in America. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So they said that's why the, the, the uh, Colombian drug lords and the Jamaican posse could never penetrate Chicago because um, if you if you look at the structure of the city from from 51st Street and State to 35th Street and State back then in the 60s they were all high rise projects and the projects are designed where you only got one way in one way out so it was no yes, way sir, yes, sir. Colombian drug lords and that could get in because um, the Blackstone Rangers alone was when I was growing up, there were 15,000 members. God dang, yes, sir. Uh, the West Side, the Vice Lords with Bobby Gore and Callaway, they they had 12,000 just on the yes, West sir. Side. They had the Vice Lords. And uh, my neighborhood uh, with the East Side Disciples, and that was about 8,500. So the gangs were very large, popular, but they were, they were well organized with meetings. I think that's what got me to make my FOI meetings all the time because back then if you didn't make the gang meetings you got when they came back to the neighborhood you weren't there you got handled and so <laughs> you learn so you know a lot of us grew up learning how to make those meetings and make sure it, and if you're in leadership all your people got to be at the meeting or else yes, you're sir. still gonna uh get a taste of something if you can't yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. so um yeah so it, it was really um and it was really a challenge for Brother Collard, you know, because he had come from a different culture uh, to get into Chicago and then really see how uh, these gangs operate. It's nothing like it used to be now. I think they've arrested all the charismatic leaders mm. in Chicago. And so what happened, the large gangs metastasized like cancer into these small crews and semi-autonomous groups. And so now they're all fighting and killing each other and it's out of control because there's no leadership you can call in to just end the violence. They used to could call Jeff Ford for the for the Blackstone Rangers. Yes, sir, uh, yes, sir. David, uh, the guy we were with, David Boxdale uh, for the Disciples and, and Bobby Gore and Callaway for the Vice Lord. And if they agreed, they these were the kind of men back then they could put the word on the street they didn't want to hear a firecracker go off and the, and everybody would settle down uh and <laughs> you know so but of course there's more guns now and you know drugs is on the scene now and um and everything so chicago is is far from uh what it was back then with that that kind of leadership yeah uh, and yes, I sir. meant to mention Larry Hoover and the Gangster Disciples. That was a very large outfit. You know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise be to yeah. Allah. And thank you for this amazing history, uh, Brother Minister. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful. I grew up in Naperville, you know, so but I had to go to school in oh, UI, yeah. Chicago. So, of course, going to MUI on 73rd uh, and Stoney, you had to learn all of the, which way to wear your hat, which color, which, you know, you had to learn all of this stuff. So it's well, amazing. You do. Here. You do. I, I can tell you if you're in the parking lot of Mas Mariam and look all the way across the park, you'll see a little field house over there. It's like a station for the playground. But yes, a, a guy named Neil used to have a large gang called the Renegades and they, they controlled from, from Stony Island uh, 67th, no, I'm sorry. Uh, 71st in Stony Island to 79th in Stony Island, all the way back to the lake. Mm, all yes, that was his territory. Yes, all yes, that sir. was his territory. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, 
I mean, there there were some pretty vicious guys that he had back then, you know. But in 1967, my folks moved. Uh, we lived down. We lived further down east from from where Mas Mariam is near the lake, and uh, the Jews were there. And so by me moving there, uh, there were white gangs. And so mo most of the gangs from mm. 1967 on, most of the gangs that we had to fight were white. Mm. And mm. They were, they were, and these were some white boys weren't afraid to, to fight you. You know, they would rode motorcycles. They were them Fonzie types, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but um, uh, you go, you drive around there now, it looks like a, it looks like a waste town mm. all the way back to the lake uh, and that. But you black people couldn't go to Rainbow Beach. Mm. So if mm. you wanted to go to the beach in Chicago and you were black, you had to go to the 63rd Street Beach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you went to the 57th Street Beach along Lakeshore Drive, you know, you might run into something, you might not. But um, most times we just stayed away from the beach because the, the gangs ran it, and if you you know if you're in Jackson Park, that was the Blackstone Rangers territory. All yes, sir. That. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you want to be in the Disciples territory, then you got to be over in Washington Park, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> which is all the way back over toward King Drive. Yeah. Uh, so thank mm -hmm. and Brother Minister, I have a quick question for you, sir. Sure. The comparison of I also I am uh, shall I graduate next year? I'm a history major, so oh, I'd like to talk to you along. Okay. about some history as well, sir. Offline, uh, but I wanted to ask you, how can in the nation when you said the the charismatic leaders of the gangs were now gone or arrested, mm -hmm. and then now you see what the outcome of the gangs are now? How right. can the young people in the nation of Islam? Um, with the minister leaving and things of that nature and all of the ministers, everybody getting older, how can we not, when the charismatic leaders are no longer in front of us, how can we not, you know, fall for the same thing that happened with the gangs? That happened with the gangs, yes. Uh, well, it's a good question uh, because, you know, it gets, it's a challenge, always a challenge between principle and personality. Um, remind me of something that Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid tells him when he's fighting. He said, no such thing as a bad, bad student, bad teacher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. And so if the teachers teach well, uh, then you don't point people to your personality. You point them to the principle that you're standing on. Because yes, sir. Yes, the principle sir. will always be there when the personality is gone. And too much of leadership, uh, it gets, it, you know, as the minister has taught us, he said, you know, in leadership, there's power and power is addictive. Mm, mm. And he said, so it's not even a question of whether you're going to get addicted or not. <laughs> you will get addicted. He said, the question is, how well can you handle your addiction? Mm, mm. Uh, and if you can handle your addiction well, then you'll always rise to point people toward the principle rather than the personality. Yes, sir. So that, so that there'll always be a charismatic leadership in every generation because, and they'll be led properly because it'll be a principled uh, oriented and guided uh, leadership as opposed to personality driven. Beautiful, praise be to Allah. And thank you, brother. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Brother Zari. Thank you, Brother Corey X, Sister Yoni. And thank you, Sister Khadija Kareem as well for your comments. Now, I want to ask you about being the National Secretary. I definitely didn't know that. Um, oh, yes, I know, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so I've interviewed um, formerly Brother Burvey, uh, now Brother Saad. I've mm -hmm. interviewed um, Brother Kamal. And then, oh, yeah. now, of course, yes, sir. Now, of course, I've interviewed you, sir. What was it like to be the national secretary before there were Excel spreadsheets and uh, PowerPoint presentations. How did you how did you handle all of how did you oh, handle God. all of that? Right. Well, um, the, the 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 secretary right before me, Brother Wazir Muhammad, may Allah always be pleased with him. 
Yes, sir. The minister kept him on and made him what you call the national accountant. Mm -hmm. And I think what the minister was trying to do with me, and I, you know, in, in a word, the answer to your question is frustrating because you're trying to reach the happy medium that the minister is looking for because you're working at the pleasure of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, that is the pleasure of the country or the nation or anything. <laughs> so you're, try, you're trying to, you know, strike this balance. And I think he wanted uh, a secretary that could convey and inspire the nation, especially toward our economic thrust and that. And so my skill sets lied better in that area than it did just keeping books. Mm, mm, uh, and dealing mm. with debt, but it was very frustrating because we, I, I was assigned that post. We were we were still in the final call building, mm. but we had acquired Stony Island, but Stony Island was in no shape for us to go in it, mm. so it was under uh, extensive renovation, and so needless to say, there was a lot of debt, uh, and trying to pay for everything uh, as it was going it, it was it was like there was uh there was a lot of weight mental weight on us uh at that time and you know a lot never places on you a burden beyond your ability to bear so you know you when i look back on it we we were we were shouldering ourselves with it but um you know there was a great challenge on the nation to keep raising money to fix up Stony Island. And we had to keep charity coming in to keep um, the nation running. Mm, yes, sir. Uh, and of course, the way God had guided us, um, the palace came up before the mosque. Mm, and so when mm. the minister got the mosque, it, it, you know, it brought out things in people that you know, we didn't even know was present in the ranks, mm. but um, because you know, there's always a challenge when the when the leadership is getting a house or a spot to use, uh, and you're still trying to get the um, the moss in itself. And I think a lot of people have forgotten that the minister was going in his pocket. He purchased the final call building. Mm, mm, um, mm, mm. He said, "Now let's fix it up and everything." He he purchased and started the building of the restaurant, the salon restaurant. He was yes, doing sir. that out of his pocket. And I think yes, people sir. had had forgotten that he had done these things. He had mortgaged his home to start the Final Call newspaper. Yes, sir. Uh, and so, you know, you get people thinking all the time that leadership is trying to make something off of them, and they forgot. We have the kind of leadership that sacrificed himself first. Um, he went in his pocket first. He, yes, he didn't call on us to do anything that he had not already done uh, in a big and substantial way. So um, being the national secretary was um, ruling, but I, I met the laborers. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I prided myself on if you were, say, a minister in a city, um, I knew who, who your troublemakers were. <laughs> so when we get ready for a national meeting, you know, um, I made sure that your troublemakers from your city weren't in that meeting with you. You know, mm, I made mm, sure, mm, you know, I, I've tried to make sure I knew uh, major people that were trying to run interference uh, with our efforts. Um, I kept files, you know, on folks and that. So I was that kind of secretary. I tried to run what they call shotgun mm, over mm. troublemakers around the country. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but, um, but all in all, we were we were building. Uh, we put on uh, one 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 year. The, uh, we had like an eight day convention. God, that was a nightmare because we had to keep <laughs> paying people. Folks were coming on and everything. But um, I remember one year uh, I needed help. And uh, your father gave me help. He 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 assigned me, um, uh, brother. Um, oh, I can't think of the name he was given now, but he was brother Dion at that time with the red hair. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, brother, he was helping me, and brother uh, Captain Dennis gave me brother Hugh at that time. 
before he moved out to San Diego. And, you know, there were others that used to just work with me all weekend to help me, you know, uh, in my collections and just keeping some order uh, about things. But um, um, I think the minister felt that I would be better as a, as a minister than a secretary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, um, you know, I was, I was then relieved of that and, and made the troubleshooter going around the nation and that until he assigned me to the city of Philadelphia. And so, praise and be to the Praise be to Allah. Yeah, but we, but to talk about the tools we had, everything was done by hand and we were just starting to deal with Lotus 1, 2, 3 and the computers. Mm, so we mm. did have computers in and back then you had to work through MS-DOS. We didn't have Windows and all of this so you had to type the whole pathway in to get into this <laughs> program you were working uh and brother wazir and i would would be doing that and setting up things so that we could keep the books uh on on computer form until the minister finally got what he was looking for and that's what brother Saad was able to bring was the nation's program that's mm -hmm. where the minister's been trying to get to. He's always wanted to push a button and he can open up and see the activity of any given city that's in the nation. And so now with the nation's program, he's able to do that. Beautiful. Praise Beautiful. be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Brother Minister, uh, Sister mm -hmm. Noni Muhammad has a question. She says, how you spoke earlier about um, how, do you, you wanna, how do you handle the power? She's asking you, how do you handle the power that, that is given to, you know, student laborers and things of that nature? Well, I think, you know, I mean, for me, I try to stay close to the scriptures and stay close to my place. Uh, I'm always reminding myself that I don't have any followers. I am a follower. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been asked to help and be like a caretaker of the followers of another man. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, and you know, you 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 have to fight to to you know keep yourself humbled um, in your mind and in your heart. Um, yes, sir. Uh, and 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 it's it's not an easy work because you still got to try to get things done. It's hard to get things done with people if they don't respect you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and when you're when you're still suffering from a slave mentality um if you're not driven um you won't get anything done yes sir yes sir yes sir you know um and i know sometimes people don't like hearing that there may be a handful of us that are self-motivated but most of us unless we're pushed uh encouraged um and that we should really be honest with ourselves. We, as a group, we won't get anything done. So, you know, we, we, we drive uh, and do that, but I think um, you, have to, you have to keep yourself in the right perspective uh, of who you really are uh, and not make uh, yourself um, the area of focus for the believer, but um, keep the person who appointed you lifted up uh, and, 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 and what they would have you to do. You want people to be inspired uh, and not forced. Yakub used force and fear. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. You should use inspiration and faith, uh, you know, and, and and, and those are the kind of things. And I think being in sales for a living, um, you know, you can't, you can't force a sales force. You have to inspire them. And so the company that I work with and that, um, we would have meetings every month and they would all be designed to inspire. And my yeah. wife at that time, uh, Sister Mariam, when I met her at the Final Call building, she was a senior director with Mary Kay. Mm, and she mm, had mm. the pink, she had the pink car and everything. <laughs> and yes, she sir. had about a hundred, she had about 125 or 130 women 
under her leadership. And I never forget Minister Farrakhan told her, any woman that can that can inspire a hundred some women to follow them, I need that woman with me. So, <laughs> so you know, back to her question, I think Sister Noni is that uh, feeding and learning how to inspire people. You know, get on a mission of how to inspire other people to do. When your father first became Supreme Captain, he, he might not remember this, but he, he used to have a book in his hand when he walked around Chicago. Mm. And it was called, uh, what was the name of that book? Don't Do Delegate. Don't Do mm. Delegate. Get somebody. If it's, if it's something that only you can do, then of course you have to do it. But if, if it's not absolutely necessary for you to do that thing, then he said, delegate that duty. And, um, but he was on a mission to inspire others to do. And one thing he always taught us when he was Supreme Captain, he said, you know, the leadership is not about what you do, but what you get others to do. Mm, mm, and so, mm, mm. Uh, and so that should really be uh, more inspiration and not force. Beautiful. Be. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, Brother Minister. Thank, Thank you all for your love, comments, and your great questions. My next question for you, sir, is the Philadelphia, now I don't know what it was like back in the day, it seems to be a um, mixture of a lot of religions, but of course, um, Islam. It's prevalent, especially in like the hip hop and the rap community, a lot of different sects of Islam. How were you able to, um, you know, stand firm on a nation of Islam in, in a city with so much different, um, like there's a lot of a lot of different types of Muslim Sunni, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. How were you able to uh, uh, hold it down for the nation, sir, for all these years? Well, we, we have, we, we were blessed to uh, work our way out of uh, an image in the city because when I moved to Philadelphia, just at that time, a lot of people wouldn't work with the mosque. A lot of people didn't really know a lot about what it was about and everything, but with the great workers and the believers there, we were able to uh, really bring ourselves out more uh, with uh, community outreach and things like that. And at one time, the minister said when he was, um, when we were working for the Million Man March, he said, you know, we have one of the strongest organizations because he actually, it was lost found from Philadelphia that helped. Joe Sertain was the city managing director. He became, he became a major operator. Uh, he had to actually go to Washington DC early with Ben Chavis and others to help them mm -hmm. organize mm -hmm. uh, setting up for the march because of the permits, the way the permits go in DC it's a lot different from a lot of other cities. You may, you may need a DC permit on this side of the street, but in that park across the street, uh, it may be federal property. And so you need a federal permit. And so you have to know a lot about the design of the city and those kind mm -hmm. of things. Uh, the other thing that, that helped in the Million Man March was Henry Nichols. He ran the hospital workers union here in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. but they were tied all over the country. Well you want a million people out, um, they're not gonna let you have a march like that if you can't set up proper first aid or medical stations and that. So he was able to get with union leaders in the health field all over the country and they provided us with the health workers and that to come in from all over the country and things like that. So we, we were able there. Now, the, the thing with the, with the Muslims, you know, many of these folks got they started with the Nation of Islam. And yes, many sir, yes, of them sir. were under, under Minister Jeremiah Shabazz. Yes, I'm sir. the type of person, I'm not going to let you forget that. So I don't yes, care sir. what you're going to run into or anything. Um, you know, and the minister has been here and he's talked with some of them. And of course, one group actually had the minister come to help them when they were getting their messages. Mm, and mm, they had mm. a dinner and had the minister there you know, to speak. And um, um, and so we've worked with a lot of these groups and, uh, and there were a lot of them in Philadelphia. You have to realize it's a very physical city. So many of them, when they came in the nation, you know, they didn't do, some of them as FYI didn't do a lot of studying. Mm, mm. So, so by the time um, uh, Wallace D. Muhammad, who became Imam Water Dean Muhammad at this yes, time took over, 
you know, for some of them, they just admitted to me, this was the first real time that they studied the Quran, uh, mm-hmm. you know, different mm-hmm. thing. They were just in the nation and whatever had to, whatever had to be done to produce uh, in Philadelphia, they just did it. You know, um, Minister Jeremiah Shabazz had, I have a picture here somewhere. He had 40 FOI who all, each one of them took 1,000 Muhammad speaks a week. So yeah. when Philly yeah. would order 40, you know, 40,000 of those papers just went to them 40 brothers. Mm. They, mm. Were, they were just, they were dedicated like that. Um, there were, um, there were brothers, and of course, it has, you know, somewhat of a tarnished history because uh, Sam Christian and, of course, Ronald Harvey and others who had the Black Mafia, yes, sir, yes, they sir. ended up coming in to the, to the ranks. And so, you know, they, they just, they had an attitude that everybody should pay charity to the Honorable <laughs> Life. So, <laughs> it it, it kind of gets out there. Uh, your, I gave your father one of the books when he was here some years back traveling around for the for the minister uh, that deals with Moss Number 12's history mm. called a social and political history. So ask him about mm. the book because he has it in his possession. Yes, it sir. goes into how Minister Jeremiah and the Black Mafia all worked together and, you know, um, and so they push you know, for Islam. And of course, when Sam Christian, who was over the Black Mafia, became the captain here, um, he the first thing he did was made sure that the Muslims were, were no longer disrespected. Uh, so yeah, the sisters were, were, were respected in that. And um, um, the sisters were allowed, they had gotten permission from headquarters here uh, it, with their sewing factory in Philadelphia, um, they they made their own garments here, mm, mm, uh, mm. and so and we still have some of the sisters who were in the mosque back then who um, have worked with us, and they were some of the seamstress uh, there. But the sisters were known mm-hmm. out of Philadelphia to make um, every color in the rainbow. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here and uh, the sister. Uh, her name was Sheila at the time. I think her name was Endazar. Later on, she had moved to San Francisco, but we did a, we did a history of the nation of Islam um, weekend seminar. And um, Friday night, we had the whole history of Philadelphia and mosque number 12. And then on Saturday, we had Minister Rachman here, Minister Akbar here, uh, we were just bringing in people to deal with the whole history of the nation of Islam. But we brought this sister and she told a story of how when she became, when Minister Jeremiah made her the MGT captain, she had 500 sisters. And in six months, just the MGT here raised something like $115 million, uh, $115,000 dollars for the honorable Elijah Muhammad and she took it up in a brand new briefcase that the sisters purchased for her to take it to the to the messenger um so these groups uh they're fond of that history and so when you yes, yes, bring that history up to them even though they're in the message they always remember that history and so I I have to say over the years when it first started out it was a little hostile uh, but I have to say, over the years, we've we've kind of won each other over in in different ways. So there are some projects that we do together, uh, and and so you know, and many of them, they they don't seem to have a desire to come back this way uh, for the nation. But they don't speak as ill of the nation as as I remembered when I first moved here, you know, over the years. So. You know, we say praise is due to Allah. Many of the groups now that are really hostile toward the nation and, and Minister Louis Farrakhan's leadership, they weren't a part of, of the nation. They never were a part of the nation. Mm-hmm. So some mm-hmm. of these groups that have emerged, they're sort of on their own. Uh, they're, they're, they're kind of extreme in, in, in some of the things that they do. But, um, 
you just find those that had really had been a part of, of the nation before, um, they speak fondly of it in their days with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. And yes. thank you for that work, Brother Minister, um, that you have done and the, your staff and believers in Philadelphia. Have you ever been faced with fear? And if so, how did you overcome that fear, sir? Um, I, I think um, in 1997, um, we were at Savior's Day and uh, I remember um, when I got back, a sister had been trying to reach out to me because uh, the, a white community in Philadelphia had attacked her and her son. And apparently they were still doing things to them to kind of terrorize them. And they, they had moved in this neighborhood and that. And so when we went down and saw what they were doing uh, and I held a press conference that there, there was life in retaliation. If well, anything well, else well. happened to this family, uh, there would be swift and immediate retaliation. That 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 thing hit like wildfire. <laughs> and uh, I can tell you that um, um, when the white community marched over to the police station to say, you know, he's called a march into our neighborhood. Um, and we call for a 5,000 man march. Um, this thing resonated around the country. It ended up catching fire around the country because, you know, people wanted to do something after the Million Man March of 1995. So this was only 97. And what it ended up doing, a Jewish mayor uh, ended up writing a letter to invite Minister Farrakhan to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, to stand with him to try to help deal with this racial problem. And so, but in, before the minister got here, the white community was really railing against me. And, you know, I got to thinking they might try to plant a bomb in the car, you know, just do something. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So I was a little afraid for the, for the family, but, you know, you face the fear each day and then you're just stronger uh, in spite of the fear. You're just stronger in each step. But yeah, I think yeah. that'd been the only time my sons were much younger then. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Suleiman and Lukman. And so yes, sir. I just thought about the family safety and that. But um, no, we, 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 um, but other than that, we, we thank Allah for, you know, we still believe that he's been with us every step of the way. Yes, sir. You know, in that, when the minister got to, um, uh, because they started calling him prominent black people because it, obviously the mayor was reaching out to different people to try to see if they could stop me. And they initially went to get somebody from the Massachusetts to try to see if I would call the march off and I wouldn't. And then the president of city council saw that I wouldn't. And they said, well, what would it take to make you call this march off? And mm -hmm. I said, there's only one man on the planet that could stop me. And he lives at 4855 South Woodlawn in Chicago. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So eventually they went to someone that went to the minister. And I know when the minister was contacted by them, you know, he called me and he asked me, what was I doing? And, um, and I brought up point number 11 of what the Muslims believe. Yeah. And he was quiet for a minute. And then he said, he said, yes, brother, and mob attack. So he went to point number six. <laughs> of what the Muslims want. Oh, and I guess he was saying, if you're following our program, the Muslim program, and that's, that's um, you know, I would say this to people that are setting up Facebook pages, um, websites uh, for the nation or to represent the nation in your area, uh, I would say always add and put up the Muslim program. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> People shouldn't be guessing what we're about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. People yes, sir. try to figure out, do Muslims do this? Or do you all believe this? And I said, no, here's what you need to do. Take these 12 points home. In fact, purchase this Final Call newspaper. And then take these 12 points, read them, and then come back with your question. Because you should first know what we believe. See, and then we start there. 
and then we can work our way into the questions because many times people don't realize that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad took the time and in 1962, or August of 1962, he had this now applied to our paper. And so it makes it easy for us. Why should I have a discussion with you about all these questions you got about Islam when you could read these 12 points first? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then we can have a conversation. And so on our Facebook pages and our websites, I would encourage everybody, in, in addition to everything else you're putting up about what the nation is doing and saying, uh, put our program up because the minister in 10, 10, 15, when we were in Washington, D.C., he brought this program up and found out that black people agreed with it. So it's not um, now just what the Muslims want, it's really what black America wants. Uh, at least the 10 points there uh, of what we want. Yes, sir. Beautiful. I want to thank you again, Brother Minister. I just have three more questions for you, sir. Yes, sir. And I want to, before we get uh, started, Brother Minister, I just want to take a quick 60-second uh, commercial break to, to show our sponsors of this month's episode who were very excited about you being interviewed, Brother Minister. Um, cash at dollar sign, the People's Podcast. Um, my brother Rashad, Jamal, Street Premier Media Production. They have a 4K camera. They do television, film, and they do editing. Please reach out to them. My sister Miriam's children's book, ABC, I Love Me, and coloring book it is on Amazon. Oh, wow. Thank you very much for your sponsorship. My sister Naima, Stay On Point, Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to people all over the world. And now she has an, in, a, um, she's teaching class COVID protected, but in class studios, dancing as well. Our brother Supreme uh, Men's Fashion in St. Louis, Missouri. He will ship your clothes and keep you dripping all across the country. Thank you very much. Brother Kenneth, wow. I mean, Brother Ronald Muhammad, uh, BMW Entertainment. They do event planning all across the country. Thank you very much, Brother Ronald. Uh, Raising Black Millionaire, Sister Tia Muhammad. She has flashcards for young Black uh, children and teaching economic empowerment. Thank you very much, Sister Tia Muhammad. Brother Kenneth Muhammad, bow tie maker extraordinaire. He will ship bow ties to you all across the country. Thank you very much, Brother Kenneth, for your sponsorship. I'm coming right back to you, Brother Minister. Brother, yes, Todd X, Brother Todd X McGraw, he has Supreme Team Insurance Group. Please reach out to our brother if you need some insurance. Thank you very much, Brother Todd X McGraw. Exodus, a new way of life, credit restoration. Thank you very much. If you need your credit fix, please reach out to our people. Uh, Colleagues Boutique, they do custom shirts. Thank you very much, Colleagues Boutique, for your continued sponsorship. Brother Chantel X, they do refrigeration and freight. They ship things all across the country. Thank you very much, Brother Chantel X. Brother Jabbar Muhammad of Chicago, Client First Construct, uh, Construction Incorporated. They do painting, carpentry, wow. flooring, and plumbing. Thank you very much, Brother Jabbar Muhammad, for your sponsorship. I'm coming right back to you, Brother Minister. Sister mm -hmm. Landra L. Muhammad, Navy Beans More Than Bean Pies. Thank you very much, Sister Landra L. Muhammad. Dr. King, I mean, Dr. Henry M. Carter, he has King uh, Henry Turkey Legs here in Atlanta, Georgia. If you need some turkey legs, please reach out to Dr. Henry M. Carter. Thank you very much. Our sister who does home decoration, you've done a great job. Please reach out to you for homedecor.com. Um, Brother Rashad Muhammad of Chicago, COVID-19 Disinfection Cleaning Company. We, we wish you nothing but success, Brother Rashad. Please reach out to our brother if you're in Chicago. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdusharif.com. Thank you very much, Dad. And last but not least, my two books, No Father, No Excuse, and Cleopatra, my children's book, both of which are on Amazon. Thank you very much. If you would like to uh, be a sponsor, please cash app the People's Podcast and like, share, and subscribe. Back to you, Brother Minister. Oh, man, that's Brother Minister. Speaking of your book, I mean, speaking of my father's book, Brother Minister, you... Now that I know you're a history major in all of these, you know, years of study, would you ever write a book about your life, sir? You know, I thought about it, you know, but I, I don't know. I, I just didn't see my life as too important. So I don't, I didn't think it'd be of an interest to anyone. I guess that's why I probably haven't put anything together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. But if you write a book, uh, Brother Minister, I would love to read it. And would you give us the honor of coming back on the People's Podcast to you know, display it so oh, we can yes, promote that book, you know, all across the country and around the world. Uh, Brother Minister, mm -hmm. on a lighter note, I have music behind me because I'm a big fan of music and television. And these are some of my favorite albums. But it, 
do you listen to music? And if you could choose one of your favorite albums, what album, if you could choose one album, um, I know you, I'm um, in Chicago, but now Philadelphia. So you have the Dale Phonics, all of the, all of the, 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 the Stax mm -hmm. music and all of the music from the seventies. If you could choose an album that you would uh, say is your favorite album of all time, what would it be? Wow. Um, man, I love so many of them. I, you know, one of the, you know, because when I started out listening to music, you ran down to the record shop and bought a 45. You know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We didn't start buying albums until, you know, a couple of times the Temptations had some songs built up on albums, but um, man, I think one of the one of the first real albums when, and I'm talking about a time when you just bought albums after that and you didn't buy 45s anymore. <laughs> yes, started sir. with Isaac Isaac Hayes. Okay. Hot Butter okay. Soul. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was a fantastic uh, album, uh, and there were so many others after that. With you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire came up, and yes, sir, yes, sir. You know, the Ohio Players and all of that. And that yeah, was yeah, 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 yeah. But during the '60s, mostly, mostly we had 45s. Mm, mm. Uh, yeah, we had 45s uh, then. So, but um, you know, Hot Hot Butter Soul was one of one of the with Isaac Hayes was one of the but uh, and the original Chaff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chaff, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, that was those. Those were some of the favorites, you know, in terms of an album that you would just listen to, like the whole album. Yes, sir. Just, yes, sir. Yeah, he just he just worked on every song, you know, because when the albums came out, sometimes you like two or three songs on it, but it wasn't the whole album you wanted to yes, listen sir. to. When it came to yes, Chaff, you listened to that whole thing. You know, beautiful. Praise yes, to, uh, what do you do for fun, brother minister? Hmm? What do you do for fun? Well, um, I try to, I, you know, I try to go out and do something. Of course, with COVID nineteen now, some of the things like trying to bowl sometimes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Shooting pool. Yes, sir. Um, and things like that, because my wife and I we like to shoot pool and we like to bowl. Uh, but uh, we haven't since COVID nineteen. We haven't done a lot of that. We, we we're looking at trying to maybe get a pool table into the house in the basement, uh, so we have something else for 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 recreation. But you know, reading and research, I just I just I could get lost in it. But you know, when you have other people in your life, you're trying to do things that you can do together. Uh, and so so I would say you know, shooting pool and bowling are two things I like to do to have fun. Uh, but I really like researching and getting getting new material uh, and things in, in history and learning about uh, different things. There's still so many things to learn about, you know, historically. Praise be to God. Yes, sir. But yes, Miss, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, as a student, I, I love history. Do you um, watch, there's a television show called Fargo. Um, it's on FX and it's on Hulu, but it's it's about the history of Minnesota and it's newer, um, Chris Rock and some others, the guy from um, Glenn Turman from um, I Coach saw a preview. Now, yes, sir. you got to help me with Fargo because when Fargo was first brought to my attention and I tried to watch it, it was it was some sheriffs or something. Or, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it yes, two sir. different ones or is that the same thing? It's the, it's the same one, but it goes, it, it's, it's a, from a history standpoint, it's beautiful how they tie it all together. So the first three seasons were primarily in Minnesota, but this takes place in Kansas City, but it has a connection. It's not over yet, so I don't know the full connection, but it has a connection to Minnesota. But they deal with the Irish, Italians, and the Black families of Kansas City and the how each family, in order to keep peace in the city, they would give the, a son to the oh. other family and have the each person would have another son. They would raise them because they say if you don't violate, we won't touch your son. You won't. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a good. It's no, something I'm, I gonna, think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look that up because um, one of the things that I did growing up before coming into the nation, I did a whole historical thing with the. Um, with the with the mafia, the syndicate, yes, sir, yes, sir. and everything, and that because of course, in Chicago we had we had you know on the south side of Chicago was Al Capone, yes sir, and yes the sir, Italians, 
And then when you cross Madison Street, Dion O'Banion and the Northside Gang with Bugs Moran and others ran that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, I, I, I think the letters are still chewed up from the machine gun fire when they killed Jaime Weiss at Holy Name Cathedral in Chicago, mm, mm, right across mm. from Water Tower. Uh, but the history of the mob and how how many of them grew up as children together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because Capone came from the east side of New York, along with um, the, uh, Johnny Torrio. Yes, sir. Moved, yes, sir. Yes, sir. They moved to Chicago to work with Big Jim Colosimo and. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's yes, a whole sir. history, but there were Jewish gangs in Chicago on Roosevelt Road, the Hershey Miller gang, and then the Irish uh, were big in Chicago. Uh, yes, sir. And then, and then the Italians grew. Uh, and of course, um, all in this East Coast area. In fact, uh, I have an encyclopedia of the mob, so you can look up people. Um, Say, for instance, they got this Johnny Fontaine character in The Godfather where, yes, sir. Yes, sir. where the Don was supposed to have gone and put a gun to this guy's head to get it, get him out of a contract. Yes, sir. Well, that really happened with Frank Sinatra. Mm. The, but the person mm. who did it was Willie Moretti. The Moretti brothers ran North Jersey mm. along mm. with a Jewish guy called Longy, Long, Longy Zillerman, worked with Meyer Lansky, Yes, sir. Some of these were mobs that worked along with Lucky Luciano and them out of um, out of um, New York City. In fact, um, there's a book called The Life Story of Don Carlo Gambino, mm, mm. Gambino family, and uh, there was a, a history of there about a black a black man that had a fight with a Italian in North Jersey, and um, I think he got the better of this Italian. And so they wanted this black guy killed. Mm. Uh, and so in the book, it says they sent to the Gambino family to send a couple of hitmen to kill this black guy. So what they wanted to do was check the black guy out before they killed him. Yes, they, sir. Found yes, out sir. He was, they found out he was an FOI. Mm. And, and in this book, and this is before I came in the nation, in this book, Don Carlo Gambino's family sent them back and told the Italian to just take the whooping because they said the mafia cannot afford an all-out war with Elijah Muhammad and his followers. Yeah, uh, they said that uh, because see, when you're in the mob, all your people are getting paid. And so in the real sense, they're businessmen. And they're with you based on business. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But with Elijah Muhammad, these weren't paid soldiers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. There's a greater zeal here. And Gambino knew about that. that. That's what Michael Corleone was talking about when they were in Cuba. He said, what does that tell you about the guy blew himself up? He said, yes, sir. These soldiers under Castro, they don't get paid. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're fighting a different kind of uh, person. And if you go in the history of the Muslims 1400 years ago, they saw that the followers of, of Prophet Muhammad, uh, they had greater zeal. Yes, sir. Yes, than sir. Those that, uh, because these were men who, uh, when they got up to go fight, they would look at their families for the last time. And they said, we're going out here, but look, I may not come home, but it's a lot of people not going to come home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, being on the battlefield. Yes, sir. That, yes, kind, sir. Of, that kind of zeal, uh, it began to put terror in the hearts of, um, of uh, those that were fighting Muhammad. And that's why you begin to see many came over when the treaties and things were made and people had a chance to consider what they were fighting against, you know? And so um, um, I'll, I'll look up Fargo, see if, yes, sir. you know, cause it looked interesting when I saw Clint Thurman and others were being involved with it. I thought it was something totally different. With yes, sir, yes, sir. Or something. I thought it, was <laughs> it all ties in, it all ties in. It all ties in, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and 
And one last question for you, Brother Minister, but I also wanted to, um, one more suggestion, Boardwalk Empire um, is a show that deals with Maya Lansky and I love Let's Lucian. Say it again. Boardwalk Empire. Oh yeah, Boardwalk Empire. I did see some of that. Yeah, okay, Maya yes, Lansky's sir. involved and yes, sir. Uh, yeah, they're, these guys, these guys came along. You know, the FBI put uh, Maya Lansky under surveillance for 52 years, the FBI agent that was assigned to him died. He outlived the people that had him under surveillance. <laughs> you know, Lansky really, you know, ran an operation and he grew up with Benjamin Siegel. And, and, and ultimately, Benny Siegel went out west and uh, brought up, uh, had, had them build a little stopover for GIs into Las Vegas. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. And it, it began to bring them millions and millions of dollars, you know, the yes. casinos. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, Brother Minister, what do you want your legacy to be? Oh, my God. Well, you know, I, 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 I've learned, I've lived long enough to learn not to concern myself with it. It'll just, it'll, 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 it'll come up. It'll be what it is. I don't think I don't see myself having the power to shape a legacy. Mm, mm, um, mm. I see if I do the best I can in life uh, and give it what I have, I mean, it'll end up being, you know, what it is. I'm, I'm sure some people thought that maybe controversy and trouble that they were in, that they had ruined a sense of legacy. But, you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that, you know, it's only after your life has ended that you know the historians now can pick up a pen and begin to gather your history. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, I think some people have turned out far better than a lot of people thought they would. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and how we look upon people historically, but when when you look at people during the time period that they were doing their work. Um, they could never have thought they would be seen in the light. You know, uh, April 4th, 1968, when Dr. King was killed, because he had started speaking against the Vietnam War, most civil rights leaders had turned away from him. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. 55% um, of black people had turned against Dr. King. Mm. Carl Rowan, a leading syndicated voice in the country, called Dr. King a traitor to his people. Uh, and a traitor to his country. 165 major newspapers had condemned Dr. King. So in truth, if, and I was alive in, in April 4th, 1968, um, he really died. I mean, at the time that he was killed, he was largely hated. Mm. But history doesn't treat Dr. King that way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Beautiful, no. crazy. Yes, so, uh, well, Brother Minister, I look forward to um, meeting, talking to you in person, inshallah, to learn yes, so sir. much more and to get some advice with history and all of these essays I'm writing. <laughs> you know, I look forward to you. Please, oh, please, brother. please give your family you. the greetings, Brother Minister. We yes, thank sir. you. We thank admire, you. We admire you, Brother Minister. I always have, since I saw uh, Suleiman um, and Lukeman um, in the green, uh, suits and gold bow ties at the drill competition represent oh, Philadelphia. Brother. Yes, sir. We have always admired yes. you all and your family. May Allah continue to bless you, brother. And I, your family, brother. Yes, yes sir. sir. Your and, sacrifice. And I, and, I, and I love you, brother. And this means a I lot to me that you would take time to take time out of your business. And I learned so much. And I and it just makes me so proud of you to for holding it down in Philly because Philly is just such a hard city. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> no, they're very good. They're very good people here. Good, strong soldiers. I'm, I'm proud of, I'm proud of not only the captain that we have, but the lieutenant staff. Yes, you know, sir. Yes, sir. Good yes, sir. staff of lieutenants that know this town. And, you know, when I read the history of the lieutenants under Sam Christian, I said, man, I, you know, I got, I got folks like that. You know, they're respected all over the city. Yes, sir. Um, and they can do things in the city and people respect them and they know that they're part of a staff, you know, of Moss number 12. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the people that were here. The minister told me when he sent me here, he said, you know, you're going to the most Islamically 
influent city in America. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, they're, they're, they're enemies there, he said, but they are people that are there that will get rid of every enemy you got. And so I don't know who they are. So I just came and just started going to work and folks start showing up. So, yes, sir. you know, I just trusted the minister's word on that. Allah. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for thank having me. Thank you for this great interview and thank you all for watching. We're going to put it on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe. Brother Minister, is there any business or anything that you have that you would like us to promote now that we can go to help uh, support well, you? Uh, more I, I'm going to reach out to you and see there are a couple of things we're, we're, we're working on now. Yes, sir. And okay. uh, I'll reach out to you and, and get, get something back to you. Yes, sir. Anything that we can do to support you and your family and the believers in Philly, you have my word. We are here to support Thank you. Thank you, beloved. Thank you. Thank and you. give your father and, the, and your family the greetings, all right? Yes, sir. As-salamu alaykum, right. sir. Wa alaykum salam.